So hello, my name's Rob, this is Cattle Rabbit Scale Model Studios, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to review some products. Now these were kindly sent to me by my sponsor, Red Grass Games, and in this video I'm going to talk you through some of their positives, some of their pitfalls, and where I feel it can be improved later, and what I would like to see in maybe the next versions of these products. So the first product we're going to look at is the Red Grass Games painting mat. Now you'll notice I said painting mat and not cutting mat on the Red Grass Games web store. It's listed as a painting mat. Um, it is worth noting though, however, and it's something that I will touch upon a little bit later, that in some of the thumbnails, it's listed as a painting and cutting mat. Now, the first thing you are going to notice with this is it's not green, it's not covered in little tiny squares, and it's, um, it's quite different looking to what we're used to. It's got a lovely off gray finish, which is a great little touch because um, taking pictures against lighter backgrounds, especially like me, I'm quite lazy with taking pictures, especially over on Instagram. Uh, I tend to just shine my hobby light down on them, take a quick picture, and there we are. But because I've got a nice clear surface in front of me, um, it does bring out the, the color of the models quite nicely. Um, if you wanted to just check that I wasn't telling porky pies there, you can head over to my Instagram and I will leave a link below as I have been using this feature to take some pictures. Um, next up, we have the color wheel. Once again, this is a great little reference point here. It's a good quality vinyl sticker that you stick in place yourself. Um, this is a really, really cool thing for people that maybe want to have color theory on hand or new hobbyists that want just a little bit of a aid to know what colors work with other colors this wheel has that. Next up you have some handy sizes for bases. I gotta admit sometimes I struggle uh, with base sizes especially the round ones as you go into the 40s and 50s. Um, this will actually size bases up to 65 mil or for round bases and 50 millimeters for square bases. In the bottom left there you can kind of see here we've got a bit of a paint guide. Now this is a bit of a quick reference point that's printed directly onto the mat that will just kind of help you with your dilution rates. It tells you how much paint to water you need to make a recess shade, a wash, a glaze. Once again for a new hobbyist this is a great reference point and painters in general it's a it's a good thing to have on the mat. Then on the right we have uh, two rulers one in centimeters going up to 20 and we have inches going up to eight. Um, it's also worth noting that this mat is in fact double sided. So if you flip it over, you can see that there is the exact same mat on the other side of the um, mat itself. However, um, I did only receive one uh, of the color wheel stickers. I don't know whether you normally get two um, if you don't, it's not the end of the world. You could always flip it back over or vice versa. Or what I would probably encourage people to do is just not stick the sticker on and maybe just have it in front of them. So things like that. Um, now this mat is good. It's available in a A3 and an A2 size. I actually have the A3 size. Um, and the A2 does have all the features the A3 has and vice versa although they are just laid um, out slightly differently. Um, for me, though, this is a really, really good size. Um, it's perfect for where I sit and the space I have directly in front of me. Now, this is a good map for painters, especially beginner painters, but I do have some gripes and maybe a few concerns with this, which I am going to go into now. So, We've got these um, sizes for base guides on there, which is a good point of reference. However, I just don't think that bases are prevalent enough to either be on a cutting mat, because you have the ruler next to it, you could use them. Um, or for a painting mat, once again, 
you have the rulers next to them. So having the size guys for the bases printed right next to a ruler to me doesn't really make much sense. The sticker itself. Now this is why I do recommend that you maybe don't stick it down on the mat. Um, I would have much preferred this to have been printed actually onto the surface of the mat because the first time I spill something like isopropyl alcohol or white spirit, it's going to lift the uh, adhesive of that sticker and it's going to start flapping about. This is a really good, clean looking mat. The last thing you want is a tatty kind of lifted sticker half stuck down on one of the edges um, because you've spilt something. The paint guide, perfect for brand new painters that maybe want a bit of help with their dilution rates. However, the more you go into painting, you realize that different paints have different consistencies. So let's say I'm gonna make a bit of a glaze with some yellow paint. Three paint brushes of water mixed into yellow paint is going to give me, well, yellow water. It's not going to do absolutely anything. Um, whereas maybe three paint brushes of water to one bit of black paint, which is a really high pigment, it's going to dilute and you will get the correct dilution rate. So that's just something to be wary of. Um, especially later on in your hobby journey as you start to realize that paints thin differently and um, are built slightly differently so it is worth noting that to me I would never want to um, get my foot in the door with bad habits so I would always say teach someone correct from the start but I do understand why this is on here um, that's just a minor gripe for it now my biggest issue on this painting mat is what you don't see. Now, squares. It's hip to be square. Huey Lewis once sang that and he couldn't be any more right in this instance. It's nice having the inches and the centimeters as rulers. However, they are only vertical. There are no horizontal ones. So it would be difficult to um, line up even a basic cut here um, because there is no way to know that you've got a straight right angle. I myself do a lot of crafting so this is a really big thing to me. Um, I actually rejigged this mat uh, in a way that I feel it would maybe be a bit more beneficial and I'm going to show you that right now. Now I've added squares. You, If you are intent on keeping the base sizes, then we actually don't need to put the whole thing on there. We could just measure half of it and it would take up less space. I would actually make the color wheel slightly smaller and print it onto the mat. Um, I would remove the paint guide itself and I would actually move that onto the next product we're gonna look at. And I would add squares in a slightly darker gray fashion to the middle of the product. Um, I didn't realize how much I use for squares on my cutting mat until I didn't have them. And it was extremely hard to do um, cutting of any sort really. Um, and I actually had to result to going back to my old square cutting mat, um, which was a shame. Another minor gripe um, is because it's double-sided, there is no neoprene backing or anything like that. So unless you have something uh, already on your desk to stop it from slipping, uh, the mat actually slides around quite easily, which was also a bit of an issue later on. Um, this is something, although it is handy, um, it's a shame it wasn't printed the other way around for maybe left hand and right handed painters, um, but I would probably lose that feature of making it double sided and just have a good quality neoprene backing to stop it from sliding around. Um, so all in all, uh, it has its perks. It certainly has its shortfalls, um, especially for me. And this is only my opinion. So, you know, please don't take this as gospel. However, I would have a hard time recommending this cutting mat to crafters um, 
just because it lacks a really basic feature that I think does it a bit of harm. So the next product we're going to look at is the Red Grass Games Glass Palette. Once again, this is a really good looking palette. It's very clean looking. It just has the logo on. Um, this is a product I wish I had when I first started doing hobby. Um, it will take acrylic paints, oil paints, um, and it's, yeah, it's just a fantastic bit of tempered glass. You know, it's, it's really hard, really durable. It's got the, the nice gray color. Um, it's nice that they went with gray and not like white or black because it's quite a neutral color in between. Um, so you don't lose your whites or anything like that. And um, yeah, I really put this through its uh, paces when I was actually testing it. Um, it is a great bit of kit. It's just mounted on some anti-slip feet. Um, I actually use this in conjunction with my wet palette and I put this on the painting mat and I'll be honest with you, I had a really good setup of products from Redgrass Games. To be fair, I probably had everything I needed as a painter, which was these three items from the same company, which I've, I've always been a big fan of a one-stop shop. Um, and this, this kind of made a really good paint system, especially for new painters and people that want a, a bit of a dedicated kit. Um, as I said, this will take acrylics, this will take oils. Um, it's designed to fit inside your wet palette. Now, only a couple of gripes I ever had with this is if you are lazy like me, I use my wet palette a lot. So I actually get the lid of my wet palette, I turn it upside down and I use that as a hard palette. It's a shame it's not a couple of millimetres smaller um, because I actually don't want to keep taking the membrane out of my wet palette or you know going through membranes when really I could just put it into the upside down lid of my wet palette and I would have actually still had my wet palette and my glass palette on hand um, that's something I would really really like to see for the um, next stage um, I did try and wedge it in there a few times thinking maybe it was just a bit of a snug fit but I was a little bit scared to force it into there so I opted not to um, which is a shame the other slight problem I have was with cleaning now they do say um, on the boxes, it doesn't come with instructions. There's a little QR code, you scan it, and it takes you through how to kind of clean up your palette with whatever paint you are using. Um, I did go through these methods. I ended up using um, some warm water and giving it a very good scrub. As you can see, that didn't get me as quite as far as I would have liked. Um, I then tried a little bit of methylated spirits. This did bring up the majority of um, the paint. However, I did find on some of the bigger pigmented paints like black, uh, it was smudging and was quite a messy cleanup, uh, which was a little bit frustrating. Uh, I then tried isopropanol alcohol. Now I have the super duper strong stuff, 99.9%, .9%, so nearly pure alcohol. And once again, although this did remove some of the dirty marks, um, I did in fact go back to methylated spirits and give the whole thing a final scrub down. So if you are going to give this a good thorough clean, especially if you're using um, acrylics like I was here, um, you will need a little bit of a spirit. However, that's no bad thing. Um, Methylated spirit is great for stripping minis and obviously it's a tempered glass palette anyway, so you're not going to do any harm to the palette itself. And as you can see, I got it all nice and spick and span and give everything a good wipe over. Happy days. And so there we have it. Um, you know, each product has its shortfalls, but they are both fantastic bits of kits that most hobbyists 
um, would do well to have in their arsenal. Um, if you are looking at having something a, as a bit of a dedicated um, hobby area, the painting mat and the glass palette is a fantastic starting place um, for more um, experienced hobbyists. Then the glass palette is an absolute must if you do like to use oils and acrylics. And um, yeah, so there we go. I hope I've been fair. I hope I've been um, informative and I hope that I have um, shown you maybe the pros and the cons of each product in a fair capacity. Um, once again, a big thank you to Red Cross Games for giving me these and sending me these products. Um, they are a lovely company to be involved with and work alongside, and they are incredibly supportive of my work. Um, I will leave links to them below um, in the comments if you wanted to check in out any of these products for yourself. Um, but let me know, do you use glass palettes? Do you use alternative cutting mats? Um, what do you think of the red grass products if you do already have them? Um, have I highlighted a gripe or could you in a way argue with me to say, well, that's a good point you've got there, but in actual fact, if you look at it from this point of view, it becomes something totally different. Do let me know in the comments below. Um, thanks again for sticking around. It's a long video for a review. I do know that. Um, so thanks again. Uh, do please consider um, dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. It really, really helps me out to carry on doing stuff like this. And I will see you next time. Um, take care and God bless.